Please be seated. Good morning, Rancho Bernardo. Good morning. What a beautiful day we have. I was telling a couple of people who were saying that it feels a little humid. You ain't been in Philadelphia. <laughs> what a beautiful day, and it's so great to be with everyone here. Let's join together in a word of prayer. Dearest friend, we gather as your friends to celebrate your love, to celebrate your presence, and to know how deeply you enjoy us. Lord, let that truth just permeate our souls this morning, that you enjoy us, that you enjoy who we are and who you created us to be. Help us to enter into your presence seeking to be shaped by you so that your goodness, like a fetter, will tie our wandering hearts to you. That you'll just join with us in such a way that we are shaped by you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. singing my Jesus I love thee
as we approach our holy God, we listen to what Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. All of us are weary. We all are tired. But thanks be to God that when we come to him in the name of Jesus, he accepts all of us and forgive all our sins. So people of God, please join me as we pray together the prayer of confession. God of understanding, we strive each day to model the behavior of your son, Jesus. Even in our best effort, we fall short in countless ways. Forgive us. Through the Spirit, help us grasp the joy gifted from knowing you so we become a beacon of hope for others. Amen. The story of the Bible is the story of God's love who planned for our salvation. God who loved all of us and gave us his only begotten Son. So ever believe in him will never perish but have eternal life. People of God, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we are forgiven. Amen. As Alan comes forward to prepare us for our scripture, let the Spirit keep our hearts open, keep our minds refreshed in God's goodness. Please join me in the please join me in the prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, illuminate the words of Holy Scripture to speak meaning into our lives. Prepare our hearts and minds to accept the Lord's calling this day. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 30. Hear the word of the Lord. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, and hope that creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. 
And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. From the Word of God, from Gospel of John, chapter 15, I will read to us from verse 9 all the way to verse 17. Will be an extra three verses than what you're going to see on the screen. Please listen to the Word of God. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commands is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because servants do not know their master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of God. Amen.
Could you take this? <laughs> Thank you. Here's what I want to know. What's that thing he wears on his wrist? I mean, is it some like superhero thing? Is, what's that all about? Actually, this is a spiritual forming tool. I keep it here because I want a reminder. Carved into my cuff is an ancient Irish word written in an ancient Irish language. The language was called Ogham. And the word is Gleondar. Try to say that, Gleondar. It means joy. There was a time in my life where my children came to me at the end of a worship service, you know, as we were having brunch in the, at home, and they said, Dad, you have to stop telling those stories. They're too sad. <laughs> These are the stories of my childhood that I shared as sermon illustrations. And they were sad. But they were what God brought me from. They were what God drew me out of, called me out of, and brought me into his joy. You see, because of that, because of what I learned from Jesus that the stuff that I went through, the stuff I survived, was not who I was, but that I was who he was bringing me to be. I want to remind myself of that. And there's a moment in scripture where God says, take my law and write it on the back of your hand. Put it right between your, your, your eyebrows. <laughs> so that you don't forget it. And so that's what I did. I just had this cuff made. This is about the fourth, fifth version of it. I've worn out the others. Inside this wristband, it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, I want to remember joy. Because what I discovered through Jesus is that within God's law, is joy. And this is what he says to us, right? He says, my joy I give to you so that your joy can be complete, full. This is something that my soul needs to learn. It's something my soul needs to be brought into on a regular basis. And as, as it is, I believe this is the reason why Paul tells us that our sufferings are not comparable to the glory that will be revealed in us. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at this passage of Paul from Romans 8, and we're going to dig into these words in a serious manner, because I want you to hear the words and what the original words said, because I think it will lead you into a a slightly different perspective. You see, as, even as we go into this uh, opening passage here in, in Romans where Paul says, I don't consider the sufferings that we have to be comparable to the, the worth of the glory we, that will be revealed in us. That word sufferings is actually the word emotions. Isn't that a curious thing? See, when we hear the word sufferings, uh, the first thing I go to, and I imagine a lot of people go to, is the persecutions that Christians were going through, that they were perse being persecuted, that these are our sufferings. But if what we read is that these strong, deep feelings, and that's what that word um, uh, that is used for emotions, these even afflicting feelings, is what, is what Paul is talking about. Then Paul's talking about a wider experience than the persecution of some Christians. He's talking about 
the wider experience of emotional turmoil that we are going through in, as, in a season as Christians. And he's telling us that he doesn't consider these strong, deeply felt emotions that can seem overwhelming to us, that they're not comparable to the worth of the glory that will be revealed in us. So glory, glory, we gotta look at glory so that we can come alongside Paul and, and walk with him and to see why that would not be comparable, why our sufferings would not be comparable to this glory. Glory, glory is the, is the revealing of the true beauty, the great beauty and reality of something like there she is in all her glory. This is the true nature of this person. Think on that for a moment. Glory is the revealing of the true nature, the great beauty and reality of this person. So there's a glory that's going to be revealed in us that there's a true nature, a great beauty that will be revealed in us. We wanna, we wanna think on how deep this goes. Because when we glorify God, we don't only recognize his great beauty, the beauty of God and the, and the true nature of his reality. As we recognize it, we also join in on it. We join in on, on God's glory. It's gonna be revealed in us and, and so what happens is that as God's glory is experienced by us, what happens is that we start to praise God. We start to experience the praise of God. And as we glorify God, other people experience the glory that we are sharing in. You see, Jesus says that in the same manner as a lit candle, in the same manner as a lit candle, let your good works shine forth so that those around you will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. See, as, as we glorify God and join in on his glory, praising him for what he has done, we begin to reveal that true nature to others and we act it out then. And as they experience it, they begin to respond in praise of God, even if they don't realize they're doing that. When they take pleasure in our good works, when they go, yeah, that's the way it should be, that's the way the world should work, they're praising God, even if they don't realize it. You see, when you lit a candle at that time, you didn't light the candle to draw attention to the candle. You didn't like light a candle and say, like, look at my beautiful candle, look at my beautiful candle holder. You lit a candle so that it would reveal the environment. And that's what's going on when we glorify God. When we glorify God and join in God's glory, we reveal the environment that God's presence creates, the way the world was supposed to be. And so as people experience that environment, they start to say, yeah, that's the way the world should work. That's the way the world should be. That's the way a human being should be. For creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. See, creation waits in eager expectation. The world is waiting for Christians to glorify God in the way that they live, in the way that they act, to reveal the true nature of God. 
It's interesting, this word creation um, is actually the word creature. Creature, like one creature. For creation waits eagerly. And from the time of Paul, rabbis used to uh, refer to people who had come out of the worship of idols and moved to the worship of fearing God, to, to become a God-fearer is what they referred to them as, people who loved the, the God of the Jews. They would refer to them with this word, creature. They are a creature. Somebody who's coming out of idol worship and into the worship of God. For the creature waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creature was subjected to frustration. You see, people who worshiped idols were subjected to frustration. They were involved in the emptiness. And that's what that word frustration means, is the emptiness that's found in worshiping idols. It's hollow. They were subjected to this frustration, not by their own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself, that the creature itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. That this person and their frustration as they discover easily and over and over again how empty is the worship of an idol. The things that, that the world lifts up as powerful, as like this is where you go to get changed, this is where you go to get power. As people experience the emptiness of those things, there is this hope that God has built into the world that the creature itself, that this person themselves will be liberated into the freedom, into the glory of the children of God, into the revealing of God's, tr God's true nature and the children's true nature. We know then that all of creation, and we've done all this work at, at thinking through what if that meant the created world? What if that meant nature? That all of creation is groaning, has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth. But what if it's everyone, for everybody, all of creation, all of the creatures have been groaning as in the pains of childbirth. They've been aching for something to just come forward right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Paul is saying here that this is comparable to what we feel. You know those moments when we feel like, just come, Jesus. <laughs> like, I just want to get redeemed. I just want the whole thing to be over. I want to be fully in the presence of God. Paul is saying that's comparable. That's similar to the experience of somebody who is aching to just walk into the presence of God for the first time. That's what it's like. The way that we feel like we just want to go to Jesus is the way people feel saying, I just need something better. This is such a waste. This is so empty. They just are looking to walk into the presence of God. And we have something similar to that, but we also have this hope. See, we have a hope that's an expectation built on a personal relationship with the God of the universe. We are living in that hope. And as we live fully into it, we are revealed, we are changed. We're changed. How have you been changed by knowing Jesus? We have this hope. 
because in that hope we've been saved. The hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what we already have? We haven't actually gotten there yet. So we can't pretend like we've already gotten there yet. Like, just because we go to church, like now we're fully in the presence of God. That's just pretending. We're not there yet. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. We're looking forward to it. Because we live in that hope. We don't have the despair of saying, is there anything better? We know there is. And we're walking into it. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. You know what's really cool about this hope that we have? Paul says, is that in the same way that we can help somebody who doesn't know God to come into the presence of God, the Spirit helps us to come more fully, more deeply into God's presence. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Just like we can help people in their not being able to see God's presence in the world, to begin to see it, to begin to experience it, the Spirit helps us to walk into it even more fully, even more deeply. Because we do not know what to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Picture this. Picture this in a tangible way. You know, Kohler comes to God and Kohler says, God, make me more patient. And the Spirit goes, oh, no. And what God hears as the Spirit speaks that into God's heart is, that's not what Kohler needs. Kohler doesn't need to be more patient. Kohler needs to love more. See, in our weakness, what we think we should get, what we think we, we need, that we go to God for and say, give me this, help me with this, make this happen. The Spirit, in inarticulate groans, speaks into the heart of God to say, this is what they really need. This is what will help them best. Because what is the work of the Spirit? The work of the Spirit is to recreate us, to be conformed to the nature of Jesus. The work of the Spirit is to speak into God's heart so that God recreates us, conforms us to the image of his son. In the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You see, this is where God is working, is in changing us to be more like Jesus. Friedrich Nietzsche was kind of misquoted as saying, whatever doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. But Christians know that all things work together for good. That no matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we survive, no matter what doesn't kill us, God will use. God is going to use that circumstance, the pain that we go through, the troubles that we face. God is going to use that in our souls to shape us, to be more like Jesus. Whatever doesn't kill us will make us stronger, but only through the work of the Spirit. Not through our own efforts. Not through our own trying. 
For the God, those God foreknew, he, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. You see, God's purpose is to shape us to be like Jesus so that Jesus is the firstborn of an entire family of people who are like him. So let's talk about predestination. This word predestined that's used here is actually the word seized beforehand. Seized beforehand. That when we have been taken hold of by God, when we have been taken hold of by God, we have been seized beforehand to be conformed in the image, into the image of his son. And those he predestined, those he seized beforehand, he also called. That word called is the word we normally translate as church, ecclesia. The called out ones. We are the called out ones. Called out of the emptiness. Called out of the frustrations. Called out of the despair. We are the called out ones. For those whom he seized beforehand, it seems to be saying right there, he also churched. He also churched. He drew them out of the emptiness, out of the isolation, and brought them into community. Brought them into community with each other. And those whom he called, he also justified. You know what's a fascinating thing? If you work with wood and you shape and join two pieces of wood, they can become justified. And when they're justified, and you run your thumb along where that joint is, you can't feel the separation. When the wood is justified, it's like it's one piece. Those whom he called, he also justified. He draws us together to shape us to a place of oneness. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. You see, as we share in that oneness together, the, our true nature becomes revealed. The way that we are actually supposed to be gets revealed and appreciated and enjoyed by the world. You know what joy is? We experience joy joy when we have people who are glad to be with us. Joy comes with people who are glad to be with us. God enjoys us and we enjoy God, and we get to enjoy each other. See, as we go through this time of healing in this church, we get the chance to grow into oneness, to relax into oneness, because the work of the Spirit is to bring us into joy, that gladness to be with each other. Because the work of the Spirit is the thing that changes our character, where we actually become conformed into the image of Jesus. Because the work of the Spirit, the presence of the Spirit, where Jesus says, my Spirit is going to indwell you, is going to be with you, is to shape us so that we become one as a community, so we become one as faithful believers with other believers in the world. 
The Spirit then, in taking up residence within us, produces fruit. In other words, the Spirit gets planted in us and fruit starts to develop. And the fruit is seen in the change of our character. The change of our character. We become different than we were. We don't remain revengeful. We don't remain angry. We don't remain curmudgeons. We love. We joy. We have peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what the Spirit does in us. It conforms us because God took hold of us, seized us beforehand, so that we would become conformed into the image of his son. As that happens, those whom God justified, those whom he brought into oneness, he also glorifies. He reveals them in their true nature. And as our true nature is revealed in the world, as we become those people who speak and live and act like Jesus, as we are revealed in our true nature, the way we were created to be, the world sees the presence of God. Imagine, imagine Imagine if going through the tough time that you all have gone through, that the people outside of this place, the people who come to know you say, when I saw what they went through, when I saw how they dealt with it, when I saw the experience within them, I thought, I need to be more like that. I've heard those stories. I've heard those stories from people who said, that's what led me to the Lord. See, we are able to glorify God because God glorifies us. We are able to reveal the true nature of God because God reveals our true nature to the world. And that's our true nature. That's our true nature. Not the troubles that we've gone through, not the things that hang on to us, not the worries and the anxieties and the frustrations. That's not our true nature. Because we've received joy. And our joy can be full, complete. And the world then will see God. Let's pray. Dearest friend, you have taken hold of us so that we can truly become your friends. No longer servants, but friends. Friends who follow you and love the way that you love, laying down our lives for each other. We pray for your spirit to shower us, to fall on us once again to melt us, to mold us, to fill us, and then use us. We pray for this with all our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for an inspiring message. As we come to the Lord with our offerings, I would like to remind us all there is a connection card in the pews. If you are new to the church, would love to hear from you, love that you will consider it your home church. So please 
fill up the information in the connection card. And if you know of anyone among us who need prayer or that the church will reach to, please put the name of the person. If you would like to be active with us in the ministry, please fill up some information there. All of us will work together as one family. We come to the Lord with our offerings. And we hear what Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us come to him and bring ourselves and the offerings to him. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. We praise your name, almighty God, for all your blessings to us. Thank you that you give us yourself. We come to you and we bring our offerings with us. And we pray that you may use it and use each one of us for your own glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ushers, please come forward.
We come to the Lord in prayer. I would like to remind us all, please pray for those among us who are sick. If you go through the, the doors of the sanctuary, you will find in the gallery in your right hand side, there is a list of names. People among us who are sick and ask us to pray for them, please take one of the, this list and pray for them every day in your daily devotion time. If you know of anyone who is sick and not listed, please call us and let us know. We are a church here. We consider the prayer is the way that will take us to the Lord and God answers our prayers. Many miracles happen among us. So please take it seriously. If you know of anyone is sick, let us know. We come to the Lord and we bring all our needs to him. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forgot none of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with love and compassion. We come to you, Almighty God, and we give all the praises to you. You taught us today that we are not alone on this earth, for you are with us. In Adam we sin, and in Adam we inherited all the problems. We get sick, we get hungry, we suffer, we have divisions, we go sad. But thank you, Lord, that although our life here on earth is a wilderness, exile, full of troubles, but at hand is home. And you remind us that home, where is our joy, will be completed. Lord, you remind us every day that you are the one who led your people in the wilderness, through the pillar of the cloud during the day, pillar of fire during the night, and you are the same one who leads us every day through your Holy Spirit. You remind us that the, the Spirit of God that created Adam at the beginning, when God breathed into him to life, is the same spirit that created us. When Christ came to the disciples, breathed into them to the new creation. We are yours, for you are the one who bought us by your own blood. We are yours, for you are the one who created us to be your people. Help us to fix our eyes on Christ and learn from him. Because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Lord, we suffer, but thank you for the Spirit of God inside us that bring us joy and bring us closer to you every day. Help us, O Lord, to be like Christ in the community. People will see Christ in us, reflecting Christ in our deeds and our works. So the joy that we have inside us will be given to others. Help us to be source of the joy as Christ is the source for all of us. For in him you blessed us with every spiritual blessings. And in him you send us to be a blessing to the community. We pray for those among us who are sick. We pray for those who th go through a grief journey. You are the only one who is able to bring joy to their life and fill them with the spirit of God, the spirit of joy. We pray for our community. We pray for the church that will be a light, salt, to be a joy among those among us. We pray for our nation and we pray for other nations as we hear about the Haiti and the earthquake. We pray for others that you may bring comfort and healing. Help us, O Lord, 
to come to you every day knowing that the spirit who created us is the spirit is leading us every day with joy until we meet. We bring all this request to you, knowing that you are the only one is able to answer our prayers. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Just want to share with you some of what's going on in the life of the church. We have job openings here. We have uh, people we need to help us stabilize. And so we have uh, on the website now a whole job openings uh, section. Uh, if you would look through that, if you would encourage people to check it out. We are looking for office man an office manager. We're looking for help with uh, our custodial work. Uh, we have a number of things. So please uh, check that out. You can see what that list is. And you can advise people that you know. Also, I just want to ask you to be in prayer. We have kids and teachers who are starting back to school, and we have all those amazing regulations. Um, so please be in prayer. Please be in prayer for that entire community of folks who are gathering together to try to get back to normal. Be in prayer for them. Don't take positions. Don't have opinions Pray for them. <laughs> and in regard to that, we have this great community of people who help us pray. And they come up here every week. And I just invite you to be, to just be brave. As you have a need on your heart, step forward and ask these folks. They will keep it in confidence. They will pray with you and they will pray for you. We rejoice that we are the people of God and we are one with him and we get to be one with each other. Thank you, thank you. And you have a great service today with the worship and the everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It, it was really great, it was really great. And uh, we are happy with those who uh, worship with us online. Would love to see you next time in person. And uh, please let us stand for the benediction. People of God, as you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, continue to live in him, rooted and built up on him, strengthen in the faith as you have been taught. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you all. Amen.